Well, hello there. So, let's try this again. I recorded this video uh, about half an hour ago, and the my phone just deleted it. The I was using the stock camera uh, application, and well, it just ran out of space. It didn't tell me, and it just deleted the video. Great. So. This video is about uh, my latest pickups, and yeah, it's I'm, I'm making it because for some reason my subscriber number keeps going up, so it seems like people like my content. So yeah, so first of all, let's start with this guy right here. This is an Amstrad CPC 128. Sorry, 6128. It's an Amstrad CPC 6128. Now this thing is a microcomputer from 1984. I think it is from 1984 or 1985 maybe. It is a British microcomputer made by Amstrad, of course. Amstrad was known as a, um, a cheap stereo system builder and well, their, their, their quality shows in this uh, system, at least not in the computer, the computer is really well built, but the monitor and the TV tuner down there are cheaply built, like really cheaply built. Uh, well, the plastic is cheap and all that, components are meh, the capacitors on the, on the TV, well the TV, the monitor, sorry, the capacitors in the monitor are well, they're acceptable. They're Sanwa capacitors, which are not the best, but not the worst either. Uh, although there's some Nippon Chemicons uh, around there. The tuner, uh, weirdly enough, has um, Nippon Chemicon all over. So let's take a look at the machine itself. This guy I picked up for 8 euro. I first picked up the, the computer itself, the keyboard for 3 euro and then a few days later the monitor and the TV tuner appeared in the in the store and there I am with my Simpsons pajama uh, the monitor and the and the TV tuner appeared in the store and I got them for 5 euro and yeah that was the computer and yeah that was the whole package so here's the computer of course it has a set 80 CPU running at uh, 4 megahertz. It has 128k of RAM, built-in keyboard. This is the Spanish version, as you can see, because it says personal computer there in Spanish, and it also has an Enya key. Uh, that thing, that white thing on top of there, is a floppy drive that I made, but it just Right there, the thing really shows you the. Let's see if I can get to. Whoopsies. Uh, shows you the color codes and the scan codes for the keyboard. And those are the color codes for all of the colors. It has a few scratches. The computer has a, a, a few scratches, but yeah, I don't really mind as long as it works and well works that's what it does really really well uh, now the this thing sorry if I appear in the shot this thing right here is the floppy drive that I built it is really ghetto but bear with me uh, it has yeah it, it's made in a connection box in an electrical connection box and it has a Samsung floppy drive which has been modified to give out the ready signal required for the sugar interface that the CPC, CPC uses. And uh, it has a DC 5 volt barrel plug here. Which, well, you just feed that there. And that's it. It also has a couple of switches. This one's for flipping the side on the floppy, selecting the head, 
manually and this one is for setting it as dry bay. Yeah, that's about it for the computer. I'll just this is really an overview. But it's not gonna be an in-depth uh, video or anything like that. So hey, there I am. A reflector on the monitor. Let's uh, plop in a uh, an operating system disk in there. Well, this thing has ROM. It has basic and ROM plus AMS DOS. AMS DOS is the Amstrad operating system. Uh, let's put it up. Pretty sure if you're let's let me change the exposure a little bit here. There we go. Uh, pretty sure. Well, if you're British and you're older than me, at least ten years older. Uh, you recognize this thing, this is your typical, yeah, screen. Oh, they also, this is monitor, is a CTM 660, what is it? CTM 644, it is the color version of the monitor. There was also a green, a green version. This down here is the TV tuner, which is nothing really that interesting. So, let, let's pop uh, the, whoa! Let's pop the operating system disk in here. I have uh, SimbOS there in that disk. And let's load that. Drive A disk missing. Hmm, weird. Did I plug in the power? Yes, I plugged in the power. Huh. That is weird. Oh, my. My power cable, my makeshift power cable for the floppy drive um, came apart. There we go. I don't have, I, I actually ran out of heat shrink tubing and that's why I haven't finished that cable yet. There we go, I just heard the floppy coming on. There we go, let's set it as drive A. And let's load that. Symbol S for the ECPC. It'll load my settings. There we go. Let's see if I can adjust the exposure to make you. Well, I guess that's as good as we can get. And well, yeah, that's it's a full-fledged operating system, and there's, I'll, I'll go in that. It, it, I just run it to show you the, the specs of the system. Whoopsies, huh? That is weird. I didn't have any errors before. This is new. This is weird. Well, okay, I, I guess I'll sort this out. Uh, I guess I'll sort this out later. Because now, I don't like it, caught me by surprise. This thing was working perfectly fine. Maybe I connected the... I didn't connect the connector properly. Huh, weird. Maybe I, I set the the drive as drive A. Uh, yeah, yeah, I actually I, I know what the problem is here. I set this drive as drive A uh, before booting. So let's. I have to turn on the floppy drive as drive B, then turn on the computer, and then flip it to drive to drive A. And then I'm I'm not new. As a, I mean, I'm new to this. Uh, I haven't touched a, a microcomputer 
in my life. I'm more of an IBM PC guy, but yeah, this uh, I don't know. Oh well, looks like my disk went bad. <laughs> That's what happens when you use uh, 1.44 megabyte disks as 720k disks. Wonderful. So yeah, that's it for the Amstrad CPC. Let's turn this off. Next thing I picked up is this guy. And this thing's really nice. It is a Samsung Q1 Ultra. UMPC. This thing's uh, a UMPC. Now, if you don't know what a UMPC that is, uh, that stands for Ultra Mobile PC. And yeah, they, these were all the rage in 2006, 2007. They were supposed to be the future. The thing is, these are um, full IBM compatible PCs in, well, this size, in really small sizes. There's the OQO, uh, I don't remember the name, it was OQO Model 1, OQO Model 2, something like that, that was like a 5 inch PC, and yeah, I, I got this one because it was cheap, it was uh, 50, 50 euro I think it was, yeah 50 euro, no actually it was uh, about 30 pounds, 30 British pounds, plus 20 pounds uh, shipping to Spain. And yeah, I've, I think I got it pretty cheap. I couldn't find any UMPC for cheaper than this. And I wanted a computer that I could carry around uh, just about everywhere. And my, uh, neither my 13 inch uh, laptop, uh, my Dell Latitude E4300, nor my. Uh, my 12 inch, um, what is it, satellite 4000 CDS would do. The 4000 CDS mainly because it is thick as a friggin brick. So I got this thing. And well, I cannot turn it on right now because it's out of battery. And the battery is dead on it right now. It does hold a charge. It, it holds like four and a half hours of charge. That is uh, playing video. And yes, I have tried it. Uh, with uh, GNU Linux playing video and well I'm running Shubuntu in it I will probably install something else later but not right now uh, it has a 600 megahertz um, Intel A100 CPU 2 gigs of RAM which I upgraded from 1 gig uh, wireless B and G a free mini PCIe slot it has a 40 gigabyte SIF hard drive that is an IDE hard drive in a really really small form factor. It is the form factor that the um, old iPods used and I'm gonna replace that with an, an M SATA SSD eventually and I have a 64 gigabyte flash drive internal that I put in there because well this um, this is way overexposed isn't it? Um, this is the model without an SD card reader. This is the absolute, the absolute uh, bottom of the barrel uh, model. It doesn't have cameras, neither in the front nor in the back. It does not have the fingerprint reader. It has the slowest, the slowest CPU, which is the 600 megahertz A100. It does not have an SD card reader. What is it also missing? It's missing Bluetooth. It doesn't have Bluetooth either. Yeah, it is the bare bones system. So yeah, thing is, it doesn't have a card reader, but it does have the USB lines, USB data lines coming out of the chipset. So I just uh, hooked them up to a, a flash drive internally, and I just connected the power to this. I'm just stealing some power from this USB connector there, and yeah, that's about it. It is a really portable computer, and I hope it helps and helps me with my mobile computer. So, so far it has actually uh, done some cool things. And yeah, that's about it for this guy. 
And now the last thing I got is that guy right there. No, it's not a Radeon 5870. I already had a Radeon 5870. In fact, I think I had four of them and I kind of gave them away. And now the adapter, which is what I got. This thing has a PCI Express 16x slot there. Clearly, it is a 1x electrical only, but yeah. It has a power input here for 12 volts, power output there. 12 volts too, a 12 volt power input here bar with a barrel plug, a USB port, and here it has, weirdly enough, an HDMI port, and it connects with this HDMI cable. So what could this thing be? Huh? Well the thing is, at the other end of that HDMI cable there's this thing, this express card signal line. <laughs> I, I noticed that uh, just a while ago. <laughs> Actually, like, when I was recording the first take of this video, that it is not a signal lane, it is a signal line. And yeah, this th this thing is full of chinglish. This is an, a an EXP GDC Beast adapter. And it is an eGPU adapter, which means you plug this into your laptop and you get a full-sized PCIe 16X slot um, on your laptop. So you can use desktop GPUs, you can use desktop capture cards, you can use, well, just about anything that is available available for the PCI Express bus, and I guess for the PCI for the regular PCI bus too, if you use an adapter, which there are out there. And I was surprised how easy this thing was to set up on, on GNU Linux. Like, so easy easy and on Arc too, on Arc Linux. Like I I literally just had to install the the open source ATA drivers for the ATA drivers for, for the card. I um what else did I do? Oh I set the the GL render to the no, I, I configured um, I configured XORG to use the integrated video as a sync for the for the other card and and yeah, those two things make make it work already. And then you just have to start your programs with a prefix or set a or just set a an environment variable that just tells everything to run off of the other GPU. And then the that's it. It's three things. It's those three things, and they're not really complicated at all. And it's it's really impressive. Like ugh, I, I I I was surprised. Like Xorg used to be such a clusterfuck. Like even a year ago. I I guess I'm using Wayland these days. I don't even know. I I just use GNOME and whatever works. Uh, the days of uh, fiddling around with, with GNU Linux, I think, are gone for me. Maybe, I don't know why I stick with Arc. Um, I think I just stick with Arc because of the bleeding edge uh, packages and all that. But for everything serious, I use Dev1. And if I just want to inst make an install for someone, I just install Shubuntu. Or if it's a really old computer, Lubuntu, but... Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Linux rambling aside, GNU Linux rambling aside. Uh, yeah, that's that's all I got. Oh, I I also got a UPS, which I don't really have a use for because the power here is really really good. Like we haven't had a power outage since oh since like last summer, and today is the thirty first thirty first of uh, of January. And we haven't had a power outage since last summer. Uh, that's... I don't know why I got the UPS, mainly because it was... I think it was 10 euro? Yeah, it was 10 euro. And man, this thing's heavy. It is an APC back UPS CS500. Really, really basic unit. It didn't come with a battery. The battery was bad and they just removed it. But yeah, it is a 500 VA uh, unit. And yeah, I bought it for the... Sun Enterprise, which I have here, 
which I want to put into use, but I cannot for the life of me find cheap RAM for it. Um, I, I cannot. I seriously cannot. But as soon as I'm able to find cheap RAM for that thing, I'll put it into service. I also have to replace the three uh, 120mm fans on it, and I have to replace the two 80mm in the power supplies, so it'll be quiet and I can sleep with it in my room so yeah I think yeah that's about it that's about it now I just have to render the video so yeah thank you very much for watching and well it seems like YouTube measures the viewer engagement uh, using likes and dislikes so yeah, like or dislike this video, I don't care, as long as you interact with that thing. Oh, and leave a comment uh, about what uh, what you want me to make an in-depth video about from the things that I showed here. Um, I will take preference, like, I don't know, I can see everyone asking me for the CPC, but I don't know. Uh, come on, just go ahead, ask me what you want me, what, what video you want me to do to make um, so yeah that's it